Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the Tangle Mooka. And Mooka is a Zentangle original, which means that it has come from the founders of Zentangle. I love this. I love this Tangle. Um, it was intimidating for a while, but I just love it. So in the description box, before I forget, I will have a link to my step out as well as uh, other information that I have from Zentangle on this. There's a really great video, so I'll find that. I'll put the links in there um, so that way you have it in one place. And um, let's just get to it. This is a neat one because you don't pick up your pen. Well, I say you can. But the idea is is really, if you see if you can do it without picking up your pen. Now, if you're doing it on a large scale, this is a 2x2 two two bijou tile, so that makes it a little bit easier. But it's essentially one stroke. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off, and I'm going to do this uh, Maria's style. So it starts off, it's a, curved, it's a curved line, and then we do some auraing. So I'm starting here at this point. I'm curving around, and however your curve ends up, Sometimes mine end up more straight up and down. Sometimes they're more round like this. And then as you saw, I just, I, I'm i going to stop there so that way I can explain. Um, because, you know, I just start going and then it just, it you just get in the flow and that's it. And then, so you come around and when you want to stop, you just turn tail, essentially, and, and come back around and you're auraing what you've already done. And then back to the point where you started. And then we're essentially going the opposite direction. And then, you know, when you want to stop, you turn around, come back and you come to the point and then, or actually, let me, th let me, th am I saying that right? Well, let's see. Well, cause you know, when you're turning back on yourself, on itself, then, so we're going around, we're, we're going back on itself here and then we're continuing. It's almost like we're continuing in the same direction when we get to the point, but then we, we turn around here. It's just really, really, it's just fascinating. Um, I just love it. Um, so that's it. So starting your pen, going around, you know, picking a point. Um, I have some other ones that, that I'll show you so they can all, they can be different. It doesn't matter. Um, this is what they call infurled. So I'm going to show you another way. Um, so when we do it unfurled and this way too, you, we, you know, you can, you know, watch the flow of it again. All right. So starting at this point here and I'm coming around trying not to make it too wide. All right. And then, you know, we're coming back around and then here I want to take it out. And so utilizing the halibau technique and drawing underneath. And then this one, I'm going to do it right here. It's not as curvy as I would want to, but you get the idea. Now, um, you don't know, let me show you, let me show you Rick's version before I talk about finishing. Um, so that's, so that's unfurled and you can do, you know, however it fits, however it works right. Um, for you to, you know, if you want to take it outside of, and then you can. But again, it's 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 a little bit tricky because you have to use that halibau technique. And again, the halibau, uh, just so I can explain while I'm not doing it. So you know, here here I you know I'm taking my curve. I'm like, oh, I'm going to take it outside. So I pick up my pen, I travel it across, and then put it down on the other side of this, so that way I'm not drawing over it. I'm drawing under it, and then you continue. And then you know when you're coming back, it's the same thing. The and again for me, I I think I have more personally more trouble with this one doing the hollow ball technique because I, you know when I'm doing this it's just this flow and you're just going and I and I want to have that same flow here and I don't have it because I you know I have to stop so sometimes my I'm not um always happy with how my my unfurls uh end up all right so Rick's version is a little bit more bulbous and but it's the same idea so we're going to start again And then you come around. Now this one, the turnaround is big or as big as you want. And then I come to just about like this. And then we're going to do that aura back. And uh, it's the same idea. And this one, sometimes because the bulbs get in the way, I will do the hollow bow technique. And actually here I can take this one and take this one out. 
and just being careful. This one, a lot of times, I only have room for to unfurl it on the one side. Like that. And then for this one, because they're bulbous, then I usually, I like to do a little swish, swish, you know, a little, you know, a little curve line on those just adds a little something. Um, if you do this on, on uh, something else, or it actually, so let me share it with the shading and, and you get the idea. So on the, you know, if it was infurled, it's still, it's the same idea as this. It's just that these end up bulbous. So you, I think you get the idea on that. Um, now for shading and let me, I'll just do this one shading. Um, because it the same for for all of them, although you can shade it however you want or not shade it at all. That's up to you. A lot of times, what I like to do with these is I will, um, and I think probably this is on the video that because I think that's where I got it from, is alternating. So this is this is the end point, and then but then I will you know in this one it's coming up here, and it's really it's it's the path that leads to uh, the end that you turn around in. Um, and just the, the visual on this is neat because you, it's, it's, um, I don't know if you would call it optical illusion because it's like, well, wait, where does this, oh, that pat, oh no, that doesn't go anywhere. You know, it's just, um, it's just a neat visual. That one went up a little bit far. Um, you know, where you can't really see, you know, uh. The, the clear path to how did you make, how did you make that? Um, and then of course, you know, with these, the bulbs, you know, I like to add a little bit of, you know, around a little bit of graphite around the edges there. Oh, and then of course, maybe just a smidge where you go under Ooh, this one. You know, and you can have fun with these, um, with the bulbs because you can also add, let's see if I, I don't know if I have that dark enough or not, but, um, you know, it's either in addition to, or instead of that, you know, so you could add a little, a little white. I'm going to put that right on the other side of that. That's kind of neat. You know, adds a little, adds a little shine. So sometimes I might do that instead of, but that's up to you. Um, you know, in the creative uh, juice that you might have, you know, and, and how, what you've created and how you want to finish, finish it up. Now with that, so this is very nice the way it is. Some other things that uh, if you want to just have it like this and you want to fill in kind of the background, one of the neat things that I've done and that I've seen done is this. So I'm going to pretend where I'm going to have a, oh, let's just start over here. So right here, so I'm going to, you know, kind of make a border sort of and come out here, you know, and I'm not, I'm not going all the way in. This is kind of, um. It's, it's it's essentially oaring. I, I I like to th you know it's kind of like sometimes I think um, when I do um, say like a crescent moon where you you know you're just trying to fit in something in this in the say the small area. Um, let's see in this one maybe I'll start this one here we'll or this up here first. See where it goes. This one is a bigger area. And then and then you could even do. Um, you know, those little areas just to kind of fill in some of those gaps. Now there's a number of uh, things you could do, um, filling in just a texture. Um, actually, I, cause I think my, my examples I have, I have put in lines. So this one, let me just put in some orbs here. I want them to look nice, but I'm rushing because I want this to be a quickie, not a, not a terribly long video. Cause that's the whole point of calling it a quickie, right? Um, so just filling in with orbs and then, well, then we can speak to orbs for a minute. Um, whenever I rush them, they never turn out so great. So this is, you know, a nice way, actually it, this, this is a nice way to round off, <laughs> round off this, um, tangle with some little orbs because it's rounded or you could have the contrast of straight lines and saying, I'll show you what the straight lines look like. 
I'm trying to think of, you know, other things that you could put in, uh, in these little sections. But my thought is we don't want to take away from, you know, the, the pattern. This is just, you know, fill in behind type of thing. Now, if you have, say, the, the, um, uh, uh, the jelly, the gray jelly rolls, that could be neat because then it, that could be, you know, in gray. So it would be a little subdued and that could be kind of neat. Um, you know, it, it, depending on how wide, you know, you could even put a little sliver up in here, however you want to do that. It just makes for a nice presentation. Um, here's one, uh, whoop, that I did with, uh, earlier, um, with, with straight lines, you know, and then this one had more filling in of the areas. Um, so just some really, really fun things that you can do with that. Now this one here, so I, I would, this was before I thought to do this, I was like, oh, I want to play with um, watercolor pencils. And so that's what, that's what I did. And I wanted to also play with our gray tiles. And uh, I used the white 10, number 10 jelly roll on here and played with the uh, watercolor pencils. So, you know, I, I, I did some coloring and then of course then used the, the water brush to just kind of, and I was just like, I'm just spreading it all over the place. And here I did put lines. And, um, so this was just, it was just fun and messing around. And here you can see the little swish marks with the white and that's just kind of a neat look. And this one I decided to add in. Um, so I have Rick's and I have Maria's uh, mukas as well. And it's fun to, to start. And this one I did kind of in reverse of this so that way I could kind of start at the same point and because I did it reverse the whole thing you can't really tell where does what start and what ends type of thing so um, so anyway I hope you enjoyed this and um, also hope that you will give this tangle a try and have as much fun with it as I do oh, look at I see and I just for whatever reason I like to do these ones on the corner um, but there's a, there's a lot of fun to be had with this tangle. It's absolutely fascinating and soothing to do just that, that back and forth motion. You could just really lose yourself in it. So for the meditative, uh, aspect or, you know, mindful aspect, it's just, it's really, really nice. So with that, again, in this description, uh, I have links and if you like the video, uh, thumbs up are always appreciated. And if you like it enough that you want to see more of the videos that I uh, put out, you'll get, uh, if you click on the subscribe, you'll get notified when, um, uh, when I put ones out. All right. Well, with that, I wish you very happy tangling.